Oh, all right, guys, welcome back to Bible Living Here. So, yeah, that title there, guys, that, that thumbnail, that's actually true. So let's go ahead and talk about this. As preppers, we try to safeguard our preps as much as possible. But how do you safeguard your stuff against law enforcement in today's society? Is there even a way? Okay, guys, so this happened in Pennsylvania. I got my notes right here for you. Uh, February 17th of 2020. Yes, I still haven't cut my hair. Um, Pennsylvania Highway Patrol, Sheriff Police Department, wasn't Sheriff Department, it's Highway Patrol, uh, pulled over an RV. There was a rented RV that was leaving Las Vegas and going to Staten Island, New York. Uh, the person was Michael Shifter, was the driver and he had somebody else with him, his girlfriend, I believe the name of Rose. Anyway, this individual lost all his silver, cash on hand, and box of jewelry because they decided that he was shifty, not a play on his last name, and that it's quite possibly that he stole everything, so they just stole it from him. So, there's a link in the description. I also put a link up on my community board with the whole video. It's like a 20 some minute video of the whole police stopping this guy, asking him questions, and then bringing the dogs. Of course, the dog sounds off, and then they search his vehicle and they find his silver, they find his cash, and they take it. All right, but they don't arrest him, but they take it. Yeah. Okay, so over 4,000 ounces of silver was taken 36,000 in cash and a jewelry case I don't know how much jewelry was in there but it was a jewelry case now with that I do encourage you to watch the video because the things I'm seeing in this video one I'm not against law enforcement there needs to be law enforcement because if you don't criminals will run wild all right I don't have a good track record with law enforcement. It's been years since my incarceration and release from prison after doing my time paying my debt to society. And yes, when I say pay my debt to society, I don't just mean working and working in a work camp, also free labor, and then also getting out and having to pay financial restitution on their services. Not financial restitution against somebody that I have wronged. No, to the state. Yeah, it's a big money racket. Anyway, there are good law enforcement. Unfortunately, we're seeing an uptake in crooked, down and dirty law enforcement. I'll say it. You know, I get pulled over all the time. I got a perfect driving record, by the way. Yeah, perfect driving record. My wife's got almost a perfect driving record. She's got a couple infractions, but they were years ago. I always get pulled. Not because of the vehicle. No, it's after they run my tag. Because everything about you comes up. And I always pull me over. They pull my wife thinking I'm the one driving it. Because it's registered in my name. Yeah. Anyway, back to this story. Enough boohoo about my life. During this video, guys, they want to search the RV. Because when cops start asking you a bunch of questions, they're trying to build up a case on you. That's it. The guy pulls him over. He says he pulled him over because the RV did not pull out of the right-hand lane, didn't change lanes when an emergency vehicle was side of the road. Now, like in Florida, it is a law. You need to pull over safely if possible. Sometimes you just can't. So that's why they pulled him. During the time of conversation, interrogation beside the road, even though a cop's sitting there laughing and giggling with you and telling me, yeah, buddy, I understand. He's writing down every bit of information, trying to build up some type of case on you to figure out what you are, who you are. He wants to search the vehicle. The guy's like, man, I got dogs there. I don't want you searching the vehicle. Quite frankly, I think it's because he knows he has all his silver, all his gold, I mean, all his silver, all his cash, and he doesn't want law enforcement messing with it. I don't want him messing with my stuff. So anyway, guys, he says if he doesn't, to help with the dogs, because the guy's got like six dogs in the RV, he offers to bring in a drug dog to sniff the perimeter of the RV, and that would be that, just to make sure there's no drugs and narcotics. Well, guys, if you've ever dealt with law enforcement, 
that dog is going to sound off no matter what. I'll tell you why, because there's actually commands that they can give those narc dogs to bark. Don't believe me? Tough shit. I know for a fact. There's plenty of recorded information, and I've seen it with my own eyes. I know this because I've lived that life. I'm not that guy anymore, but I know how dirty these tricks can be. And now they got complete permission to enter your vehicle. Search it. And that's exactly what they did. And they tore that rented RV apart, pulling all kind of stuff, causing a lot of damage because they're suspicious. They want to see what's in that sucker. And they had a lot of law enforcement there as well. And again, check out that video. So when they get to the gold and silver, they pull it all out. Yeah. Well, during the interrogation side of the road, while the cops asking him all these questions, the guys tell him he's moving from Las Vegas back to New York because he couldn't make it in Las Vegas. He owns an engraving company. Mind you guys, this guy's actually innocent. Okay. But the cop doesn't like his story. It sounds shady. The guy ain't got no money. You know, he's losing his business, losing his house, all this stuff. And then they stumble across all these boxes of silver, all this cash on hand. And now they're calling BS. This is stolen goods. Now the guy, the owner, Michael, is that a name? I have to look at it again. Uh, he's offering to put them in contact with the bullion dealer. There's a pawn shop that deals in bullion coins where he purchased it to prove that he's purchased this stuff. The cop wants a receipt. Do you have a receipt? Let me explain something to you guys. You do not have to have a receipt for your precious metals. You don't. The cop now asks for receipts for the man's precious metals. Guys, you don't have to have a receipt for precious metals. You don't. Do I have receipts for my precious metals? Yes. Yes, I do. The reason being is because my past, my bad decisions in life, I've seen how law, law enforcement reacts. I've seen how the judicial system reacts. You have to prove you're innocent, no matter what. You have to prove that this is yours. I have to prove this is mine. It could be sitting in my house, but if they come up, they see it's the value. Where'd you get that? Well, I bought it at a local coin shop. You got a receipt for that? No. Well, we suspect it's in burglary because that's what we're here for. There's a burglary uh, three streets down from your house. Well, was that one of the items stolen? There's another thing. In that video, they were actually trying to find out if there was any mass amount of silver that was stolen. The cop was. They couldn't find any information about massive amounts of silver being stolen, but he still did not like the situation, so he took the man's stuff. So to talk about the shadiness of the judicial system, um, there should be a screenshot there for you guys, popped up there for you. Uh, this here, it's not actual. This is an email talking about this stuff, and I don't know how factual it is because I can't trace down the actual information, but let's take it at face value. Let's just take it at face value. Talking about how they're going to, I can tell them 80-20 split is acceptable, uh, force a settlement, they use this tactic to force a settlement. They're threatening him with charging money laundering through various bank accounts and stuff like that. The guy still has not committed a crime. They haven't proved a crime, but they, they, because of the silver and the cash, they believe that they have enough to get a, def, um, a disclosure on all his information and stuff, and they're going to pursue him. They're going to try to scare him to just say, yes, take most of my stuff. Fortunately for this man, according to the report I watched, um, he got his stuff back. It took years. It took years. It took thousands of dollars legal fees to get his own precious metals back, to get his cash back. Now, when it comes to cash, guys, every state's different. I don't know the exact law on hand, but it's something like you don't need to be carrying over $10,000 10, or over $10,000 cash because it can be confiscated. I don't know if it's an actual crime, but it's a possibility. All right. It can be confiscated. Well, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Law enforcement, if they pull you over and they see an envelope full of cash, they can say that they're suspicious of drug deal or anything and they can confiscate it there. Alaska Prepper covered that a while back on one of his videos. He's talking about 
uh, a guy had put uh, a bank envelope in his dash window while he was driving. You know, he went to the teller, drive through, set it up while he was driving. He got pulled over. The cops are looking at it, asking about the money, and confiscates it. Now, take your shit either way. This is why I also talk about moving your supplies around. People say, oh, they will not come for your stuff. Well, thankfully, a lot of people say they will come for your stuff. They will. When an emergency happens, you better damn well believe that they will use local law enforcement to come get your stuff as a prepper. Absolutely. When it comes to your precious metals, get a receipt. But I can tell you this much. Even with a receipt, if law enforcement wants to come in and take your stuff, they will. You can have all the receipts in the world. You have to go to a judicial hearing before a judge with that information whenever they decide they're going to give you a docket for it you're going to have to get a lawyer cost you more money even though it's their intentionally screw up or agenda and you have to prove your innocence you have to prove that is yours even though it was in your home in this case it was in a vehicle guys i get fired up on dirty shit like this and that's exactly what it was now am i best standings with law enforcement actually yeah i haven't broken any crimes in many years i've actually cleaned up my act when i went to prison did my time got out i've been walking a fine line again i don't even speed i watch every aspect of what i do because i've been behind those bars i don't want to be behind those bars again especially during this time shtf on the horizon definitely not i don't want to be back there i tell you what when you do do time and you don't have any support and help when you come out you are a broke ass mofo and it's so easy for people to go right back into criminal activity because they can't make it fortunately for me i'm a welder by trade when i got out i got into a halfway house it wasn't cheap i was paying a lot per week but i was working every day i was taking a public bus all the way to a location then walk the rest of the way to work because that was where the bus stop was to weld all day long saved up enough money bought me a busted ass car i don't know how to fix cars i'm a certified mechanic as well got it fixed got it tagged got it insured i was good to go and then i went and got me a better paying job because now i have the availability to move around I had somebody contact me about the price of silver. Spot price was down. is like $23. They're freaking out. Dude, I'm losing money. You're not losing money. This is real money. It Silver spot bounces around all the time. It's, the spot price is actually manipulated by the Fed. And the real price of silver is actually much higher than that. But they keep that down so the banks and their cronies and all their little buddies and stuff can bulk up. And then next thing you know, boom, it's through the freaking roof again. What I do when it's 23 bucks, I go buy more. So instead of this was like $28, so that was uh, $280, I go buy the same bar, $23, I'm $230 now, $23 an ounce. Yeah, save me $50. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when it's down, that's when you buy, all right? But I'm not a financial expert. But when it comes down to your gold and silver, guys, your precious metals, I recommend uh, putting a receipt with everything. Keep those receipts in a different location, though. That way, when you do go to court, you those haven't disappeared. You can actually present them. But you're talking legal fees, everything else, just to get your stuff back. All right, guys, just another public announcement for you. Man, I've seen some shady shit in my days. Speak to you later.